Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, our second, a little bit more improved episode of ParanormalWarehouse.com live. Uh, Breggies, what's going on? No, man. How are you? Remember when I said I was going to get this, uh, we were going to start rolling at 530? Yeah, it takes about three hours for us to actually go live, but that's cool. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, so listen, man, what's up? Tell us a little bit about your life. What's new? I got nothing. I'm visiting New York. I will be seeing you again this Saturday. You came out for my birthday. Just had my 32nd birthday yesterday. How'd that, birth how'd that, how'd that day end up? That party was, yeah, yeah, you know, I don't remember getting back to the hotel, but it all was good. I made it. That's cool. As long as you survived is really what, what, what matters most. That's all that matters. Uh, so listen, what we do here at, in uh, at Paranormal Warehouse Live is we kind of talk about things that are going on in the Paranormal Warehouse community. Um, soon we're going to highlight uh, some cool stuff that people are doing, go over some breggy news, and uh, chat with you guys in the Facebook Live chat. So if you're in there, say hello, and let the show... Let the show... I was waiting. You were supposed to say begin. Oh, well, you didn't tell me that. Yeah, well, you got to coordinate that in the beginning before we actually start, so I know. Well, okay, here we go. All right, so if you guys can't see this yet, the graphics all messed up. I'm going to fix it. But we have live polls. If you want to tell us what you think about these, uh, this topic, you could vote by hitting the thumbs up button, or you can hit the heart button, or the laugh button. So, Bregs, our topic for today is, do you believe in paranormal activity? Okay, kind of silly to ask it to this crew of people, but, um, you know, I guess it's a, you get all types searching around on Facebook. That's right. So, like, what would you do right now? What, what, would, what, what would I answer? Yeah. Um, I... I I'm going to answer for myself right now. Oh, well, go ahead. I'm going to do believe. Oh! Believe. Boom. All right, again, if you are voting, you could hit the thumbs up button for believe. Uh, maybe. You could put the heart. And uh, you could do the laugh button for no way. Uh, so, Breggy, why do you say that you believe? I believe just due to personal experiences I've had. Um, I do believe there are a lot of things that can be um debunked as not paranormal that a lot of people think are paranormal mm -hmm. but i from personal experiences i do believe all right so what are those personal experiences i mean well i'm not we have to get all into this now right now oh um, well, this is what we're doing here i guess so. sky, sky um, has no idea so well our first big investigation pen, uh eastern state penitentiary we got our first evps ever really um and for me, they were as real as can be, knowing that we went in there doing our thing and um, we didn't fake anything or and some of them were clear as day. Um, I would say class A EVPs. Nice. Um, I like what you did there. You like that? Yeah. Um, and then I also had experience with a, a uh, psychic when I went and that actually persuaded me to actually move out to California um, and he said everything's going to work out Every, you're going to get the job you want, you're going to do this you're going to do that, so far all of that has happened up to this date um, so personal experiences for me uh, make me believe those are good answers right now believe is crushing it with 16 maybes we got two, we got a big goose egg on no way so yeah. If I were – ooh, someone – one of the maybes disappeared. I guess it went over to a believe. Uh, so I would give it a maybe, okay? I, okay. I've had experiences. So like the EVP, definitely, definitely cool. What, what makes me change my tune – at first I was like definitely. This is like – that is definitely an EVP. But after seeing so many things online and – having people present so many things as EVP that are like very explainable. It's right. kind of like ruined that tone of 
oh, this is definitely a thing that happens. Now, if there's anything out there, um, paranormal or ghosty or whatever, I would say that EVPs are definitely a phenomenon that happen, but it's, mm-hmm. I, you know, I've been tainted. Like, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. So, and I, my personal experiences with psychics have been awful. I've never, all the psychic right. experience I've had are, have been, you know, they had no idea and it was all wrong. And I feel like they were trying to coax me to, to give them clues, which I was not going to do. So I, right. I've become, I've become very skeptic. If you asked me this like five years ago, I'd be, I'd be good to go with a, with a believe, but I, I got to throw a maybe out there. Well, I think it's better in some senses to be a skeptic or be a maybe when it comes to it, because it makes you want to research it more and be more serious about, um, in being involved in the paranormal and looking into it and debunking things and find actually finding that real piece of evidence. So I think in some aspects, it's actually better to be that skeptic and, uh, and have that maybe, yeah, maybe not feeling when it comes to uh, investigating. So yeah, it's definitely pushing us to kind of um, dig deeper and all that stuff too. So that's that. Uh, believe still in the lead, twenty-four to two. Uh, as we continue, you'll see the voting down below. You can vote at any time. Again, give us a like if you believe, a heart if maybe, and in no way uh, you can put the laugh button there. But t- I'm very excited. That I would say we had it back last time, but this time yeah. we got the music and all. I think if the music okay. is too loud, please let me know in the uh, comments <laughs> down there. I'm not quite sure how it's going to work out, but <laughs> I would like to introduce Breggy News. So, Breggs, before we start, uh. You want to talk a little bit about what is sponsoring Breggy News for this week? Uh, Breggy News is sponsored by T Public, which you could find on ParanormalWarehouse.com's uh, store or on our Facebook page. Um, they have awesome paranormal T-shirts uh, that I actually probably have a ridiculous amount of at this point because every time they go you do on have sale, good collection. I, I every time they go on sale, I buy at least five. So check them out. They have awesome T-shirts. They're like regular artists, people that are just drawing up their own things and uh, making shirts and whatnot out of them. So check it out. They're definitely worth it. Uh, and always look for our sales, the T Public sales on our Facebook page also because it's definitely worth buying one or two. So, Yeah, and I, you know, like you said, this is all made by artists. Really cool. Um, we don't just benefit. The artist actually benefits also. So um, definitely check that out. The link, I put it in the description above the video so check that out now Bregs. let's get started with the news here what's let's our start. first uh what's our first news source here well i got this one from disclose.tv um many of you are probably familiar with the website they have a lot of different stories dealing with the paranormal and aliens and all sorts of crazy crazy shit so uh the one i came across i actually seen a couple times where apparently uh a dead romanian grandmother sent uh, a selfie of herself from the other side to her family. Um, uh, Pretty weird. Yeah, and then there's a picture. Well, can I can I can I cut you off right now? Uh, you sure can. I I just want to say that if this is an actual phenomenon, I'm I'm really upset that selfies continue in the afterlife. I'm really upset that your your body is gone. And whatever you are in the afterlife decides, you know, I'm going to keep taking selfies. It, it I mean, bums I, me out. It, ca- it kind of gives me no hope. I'm hope I, I, I hope I'm able to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So the story goes, this woman claims that her deceased grandmother uh, took a selfie to send to the family to basically get them to pray for her because she is apparently not doing well on the other side. Um the family believes uh, that the grandmother has a snake wrapped around her neck in the selfie, um, which is basically saying that she is in trouble in the afterlife and she is basically paying for her sins. Uh, this is also coming from a fortune teller. That what did Grandma family... do? Yeah, right? I don't know. But this is apparently coming from a fortune teller also that the family went and um, uh, talked to. 
after after receiving the selfie. Um, all right, I'm going to show I'm showing a picture of the uh, this is an actual picture of the grandmother here. All right. And then this is the selfie that they got. Very weird, very swirly. Would I say it does, you know, it does look like her sort of. Um, I don't know about that snake wrapped around her neck, but um, it looks like her. I mean, I don't know. I just, in my head, you could do anything with phones these days. I mean, between a ghost app and everything else, you could really do anything. So I just don't know how advanced they are in Romania when it comes to this stuff. Um, but I think that's racist. But whatever, uh, go ahead. Uh, apparently, according to <laughs> no disrespect, but uh, apparently, according to the fortune teller, um, so the woman that received the selfie is named Gina. She, her grandmother died three years ago, and I guess in in um, their beliefs, you're supposed to go to the graves and leave food for her at the graveyard. She has yet to do this, so the fortune teller is telling her that she made a mistake by not offering the food as a tribute uh, to the dead and her grandmother, which is why her grandmother is suffering in the afterlife. Oh, boy. Well, so, listen, I I think it's probably a bunch of nonsense. If it's not, I'm sending out my good vibes to grandma because I don't want to – I don't want her suffering in the afterlife, you know? Send, yeah, send, I mean, send in those good vibes. Well, apparently the community that she lives in, uh, Gina, who receives a selfie, everybody has been flocking to the churches to pray for the grandmother. Uh, so hopefully something works. All right, good. All right, well, go for it, Grandma. Now, what's our, uh, what's our next topic here? Next topic we got, um, and many of you might have heard about this already. It's kind of been all over Facebook and local news and everything else. Um, a kindergarten teacher actually brought a Ouija board to school for her kindergarten kids' students to play with. Now, my, uh, as soon as I read this, I was like, okay, um, Michael, do you believe there's any uh, – I know a lot of people think that it's bad to use a Ouija board no matter what. What are, what are your thoughts on the Ouija board? I think – I think that there is nothing negatively latched on to the Ouija board made in a factory amongst other toys. By uh, what? Tell? I, I, you know what, man? I don't even remember. Last time we got it wrong <laughs> and someone yelled at us. So, <laughs> you, know, you know, you really got to get that toy company right. But um, I – listen, is there a chance – that you could do some sort of thing that conjures up something that talks through this Ouija board. I don't know. Probably not. Maybe. I'm giving that whatever. D do I think bringing it into the the classroom is going to curse all of the children? No way. I, right. But I do think it's weird. Why would you choose a Ouija board since it's A, super boring, and what are well, kindergarten I'll, kids going to do with it? Well, I'll get to that in a second. But – so my my opinion on the Ouija board is, depending on the context you use it in, that's where I believe it becomes an interest an, an, an instrument for the paranormal or it becomes a toy. So in this sense, I believe it was used as a toy. There was no, there was the way I'll read the story a little bit more. But in the story, it basically describes that she did not use it in the sense of conjuring up spirits in the middle of her kindergarten classroom. Um, now, the way many paranormal investigators and random people use it are in supposed haunted locations or whatever, you know, doing seances and whatnot, which in that sense may be not the best idea. But again, we don't really know. But also, it's made by a toy company and sold in Toys R Us. So I will continue with the story in the sense that she brought it in. Um, these kids are basically five years old, um, and what had happened was, uh, her class had been asking for, for the teacher to tell scary stories and stuff like that. So, the teacher thought it might be fun to bring in the Ouija board, and basically, she told some scary stories or read some stories to them, and all these kids did with the Ouija board is ask about scary characters in movies and stuff like that. So basically, the teacher was using it in all in fun to get her class engaged in what they wanted, what they were asking the teacher for. 
Um, apparently now a mother is asking for this teacher to be fired because she's claiming her five-year-old has been having nightmares and can't sleep at night. So, you know what, man? Being near and dear to this whole school topic, uh, I see that as being a good teacher and engaging her students. And if they were interested in, you know, that stuff, uh, you know, she brought it in and it was, it was fun for the kids. I think that the mother is probably projecting her beliefs on the situation. And, uh, you know, there's nothing scary, really. I don't know. I guess it's kindergarten, so it's not the same. But I think everyone just needs to relax, man. The, yeah, I mean, I look you know, at the, the mother's, like, out for blood. And it's like, right. yo, chill out. You're going to ruin this woman's life? You're going to get her fired? Get out of here. Right. And I look at it this way. There was no no intent to harm these kids. There was no conjuring of spirits. There weren't candles lit. There weren't um, chalk lines on the floor and, and whatever else. She, they were asking about characters and scary stories that they read in class. So, yep. uh, I mean, like you said, relax. Yeah, so. just chill out, man. All right, on to the next one. Uh, yeah, I'm just responding. Actually, Jackie just asked what age these kids were in the class. They were actually five years old. Yeah, kindergarten um, kids. In the kindergarten class. So, but it is what it is. Um, the next one, and this is one of my personal favorites. Yeah, this is a good one. Uh, now this is actually an old story, but I figured it was hilarious enough to, to bring it back. So. I'm glad you did. Thanks, man. Um, so, a lot of, <laughs> if you've used Craigslist ever in your life, or even looked at it, the people and the things that are sold on there are sometimes absolutely ridiculous. And they sure are. This, this guy basically bought, um, had a, had a chest that uh, basically contained a ghost. So... I'm going to actually read you what the original Craigslist ad uh, said, which it says, I have a, and this is from Barstool Sports, by the way. Um, I have a male ghost for sale. He came into my house when I purchased an old wooden chest. He's attached to the chest. The chest comes along with the ghost. He's attached to it. Whatever room I put the chest in, he hangs in, around in it. If I try to hide the chest, he searches for it and even gets mad if he can't find it for a while. Oh boy. You get the chest and the ghost for three hundred dollars. Please email pics of ghost and chest included. <laughs> um, That's amazing. So, um, right there, I was like, oh, "This is great! I got to share this with everybody." But um, now, Michael, would you would you inquire on this ad? Uh, no way, no way, Jose. Um, I would not. I mean, listen, man, I would read it. And I'd be like, this is hilarious. Um, but as you read, it, th this guy seems very serious. And it's it's the guy inquiring that is kind of joking around. Right. So now somebody did contact him uh, asking about it and asked a couple questions, which all these are valid questions. <laughs> I, he, I guess. I have, I have them scrolled up now. <laughs> <laughs> so he starts off by saying hey so your ad for the ghost got a couple quick questions number one scary or nice on a scale of slimer to vigo where would this ghost land great question next question how big is the ghost my apartment isn't huge not trying to get suffocated every day by this ghost he has to respect my space also valid question <laughs> number three does the ghost get along with dogs number four nope <laughs> Notice here in Wisconsin, is the ghost of Packers fan? Sort of a deal breaker. <laughs> <laughs> and last question, is it, one of, is it one of those ghosts that that's going to try and jerk me off while I sleep? <laughs> not, judging, not judging, but I'm not into that sort of stuff, so I would rather not have this ghost that tries to F me all the time. <laughs> this, guy is, this guy is ridiculous. Um, I mean, so, the, the best part of this story is... is what I'm assuming you're going to lead to. And the guy gets all ridiculous. Right. So they go back and forth for a while uh, trying to, I'm not going to read everything, but they go back and forth for a while trying to 
come up with a price that's fair and ask a little more questions, <laughs> uh, some more questions about the ghost. Um, so the price then ended up going to three fifty, and at one point it was at a thousand. Um, but the owner did claim that a paranormal person bought it before this guy was able to come up with a price, um, and therefore it is sold. So some um, so some guy owns this. Apparently, that's and I I say apparently very loosely. <laughs> yeah, I I mean this is great. I'm uh I think I might start putting stuff up there on eBay that's haunted. Yeah, there you go, man. Why you know? not? Hey, dude, people why buy crazy, people buy crazy shit, right? They sure do. They sure do. <laughs> Selfie sticks. Let's bring that back. Hey, man, I have one somewhere. Oh, I know you do. Um, all right, listen. Uh, we always wrap up the show. We do a little paranormal warehouse news segment where we talk about people in our community and stuff that's going on with us and what we're going to do in the future and blah 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 so first what are you drinking there Braggs? i got a nice merry christmas 2016 anchor brewing ale that i had from christmas that sounds lovely it's um it's delicious has some like coffee notes to it i like that i'm big into that we go to this place and i get a uh it's called a breakfast stout. It's delicious. Sounds great. Sounds great. So, first order of news here uh, is Salem Con Three in Salem, Massachusetts. Um, you can go to mghparanormal.com. dot uh, com. You got Lauren and Mark running this whole thing and their crew, and they do a really good job. This is actually the last year that they're doing it, which is kind of sad. Really. Yeah, this is it, man. Um, we got some awesome presenters uh, or lecturers. We got Brian Cano, John Zaffis, we got Scott uh, Grunewald. We got a bunch, a bunch of people. Um, so pretty much, you show up. They got a bunch of vendors. They have the lectures going on all day. It's a really all day thing, so you can hang out. It's not just a, a tiny room uh, with with a couple of vendors. That's going to take you like two minutes to walk through. This is like an all day event. It's in a beautiful location. The hotel that it's in is awesome. It's on April 21st uh, through the 22nd. I've been lucky enough to be able to go. This is going to be, obviously, my third year. And it's a good time, man. It's nice to see everybody, and they work uh, really hard on it. So hopefully I'll be getting some live streams uh, of the lectures if you are too far to go away. But if you're not, if you're close, get your tickets. Again, mghparanormal.com. Pop on there. And uh, get your tickets. Support these guys because they're doing a doing a good thing, bringing everyone together. Yeah, I posted the link in the uh, comment section, so you guys could click right there. Sweet, um, Briggs. How have you ever been to Salem, Massachusetts? Uh, no. This place, it's lovely, man. They got this um, little park with all these memorials. They have all the history of the witches and everything. It's a it's a nice little town. So even make it make it a whole day thing. Head down there, check out Salem. Uh, that's got some cool history, and that's really it. Cool. Maybe I'll see you there. If you're there, pop Maybe. in and say hello. You know? Maybe. Um, let's see what else here. Oh, I was also going to talk about – so obviously we're live streaming now. We have a whole slew of people that are live streaming with us now, um, which we are extremely – oop, can't do that. Can't do that, which we're very thankful for. Um so I just wanted to shout them out and tell you what days you can go and check them out. So, all right. So we have Dan and D on Tuesdays. I think they're going to be starting on every other Saturday soon. And they have Phenomena Encountered. Great show. Um, they just talk about ghosty things. Uh, Dan runs the Hinsdale House. So he talks about experiences coming from there. And it's pretty awesome. So on Tuesdays, check that out. Uh, I don't know why I didn't start with Mondays, but on Monday, we have Paranormal Talk with Ted Wolf. Starts at 8 o'clock. And running past that, at 9.30, we have the Ectoplasm Show with Josh Hurd and Jason. And uh, I, I love those guys. We were just on the show. I had a really good time. Yeah, that I'll was talk great. About them. Yeah, they're, they're awesome dudes. Uh, let's see what else here. On... Wednesday, we have Ectoplasm Show again. I, th I believe they do the news on Wednesday, sort of like Breggy News, except Ectoplasm News. 
and huh? they do the actual ectoplasm show on Mondays. Thursdays, we got Box Talk with uh, Mooney and D. They're really good. Uh, they're just getting their stuff up and running now, so we're getting kind of the kinks out of uh, the OBS software and everything, which took me 80 years to figure out for today. Yeah. Um, and then we got Paranormal Frequencies with Dave and John on Saturday at 7 o'clock. Um, oh, and we also have uh, the Shadow Shadow Hour on Friday. So we're jam-packed. Every day we're going to have a live stream pretty much. Uh, I know yeah. Dan is live streaming an investigation from the Hinsdale House on Friday. And then on Saturday they're going to be at the Statler Hotel. So, yo, we're jam-packed. And uh, we, we would love for you guys to join in on our live streams and comment. Um, Brex, have people been chatting down there? They sure have, and I've been answering as much as I can. What? Uh, let's throw out some questions before we end the show. Well, I got... Uh, bu- 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 I got to scroll down. Uh, Give me a minute. Uh, uh. Um, I mean, people are really uh, talking about the kindergarten story. Oh, yeah? What are they saying? Uh, uh, you know, people don't agree. Maybe uh, somebody said that uh, Karen said, what if that parent had religious beliefs and didn't want their children around that kind of stuff, uh, that she thinks it was a very poor choice to make with that kid, with those kids that age? Valid point. Yeah, I agree. And I always, like, I'm not religious, so I kind of, I don't think about that kind of stuff. And I kind of, I have to remember that, it, you know, these are families and this is what they believe and, um, I guess we should be sensitive to that, even though if we, we don't, or I don't believe in that kind of stuff. So I, right. I agree. Maybe, maybe, a a heads up would have been good. Right. I, I, I don't think it was with malicious intent, you know? Right. Definitely valid point. Um, we also, Jackie also asked, um, from the Craigslist story, if any reports from the new owner on validity of claim, uh, that will be a no. Um, honestly, who knows if it was ever really sold or if there is anything really there to sell, but, um, but yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So, Let's check it out. We will look it up. I doubt it. I doubt there's going to be anything else out there on that information, you know? Yeah. Uh, all right. Listen, let's wrap it up. Bregs. Thanks. Thank you, Michael. Everybody watching. Thanks. I feel like this was a good yeah. show. And thank and, you for uh, your comments and also the poll. What? Uh, well, let's finish oh, the poll. Oh, 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 So the poll. All right, so Believers crushed it. They got 40, 40 votes on that. Only five on maybe and only two on no way. Okay. All right. So that's what we got on that. Um, all right, listen, we'll try to make this more of a weekly thing. Hope you guys enjoyed. Bregs, thank you. And, uh, you guys, man. Thank you. That's it, dude. I'll see ya. See you guys. Now let's see how long it takes me to stop the actual thing. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be a while. It's going to be a while. We're just going to keep talking, huh? Nope. See ya.